so from so from today we are going to start with unit number 2 so in unit number 1 uh, mainly we have seen how the actually the computer execute the instruction how the pc hold the, uh, uh, the next address and how uh, the the control signal generator read signal and respective instruction will be loaded into the ir and how it will be executed right so in unit number 2 name is instruction set so mainly here uh, we will discuss about the instruction so you know the instruction you have uh, written a program in which you have written number of instruction but you have implemented a program by using a c but in this unit we will discuss about the assembly language in assembly language also there is a instruction so why the assembly language you will come to know in our further discussion what is the unit number 2 syllabus so this is the unit number 2 syllabus the first topic is a characteristics so instruction characteristics uh, we will cover today the another topics are like types of operands types of operations assembly language addressing mode instruction format types of instruction instruction execution machine state and processor status structure of program introduction to risc and cisc actually so if you if you observe here mostly our discussion is related to instruction as uh, the unit name is instruction set so the characteristics so we will discuss in detail what are the instruction characteristics so actually what is an instruction set so the complete collection of instruction that are understood by a cpu so that collection you will call as instruction set set means what the collection of instruction collection of instruction and that instruction will be understood by the cpu but the question arises your cpu can understand only 0 and 1 so how actually we can write a instruction in 0 and 1 you might have listened the concept of machine code in machine code uh, everything is in the form of 0 and 1 so it would be difficult right in the to understand instruction in binary form as well as to write a set of instruction in machine code that is also very very difficult for human being it, it is not possible you can say so how actually the human being can understand understand the instruction for that purpose we use assembly code so by the assembly code we can represent the instruction so here from this diagram you can easily understand like if we you are considering a lower level language to higher level language so here you will come to know like hardware is there and then machine language is there so machine language means completely uh gerund one is there you are all the instruction as well as the data is in the form of zero and one because the machine can understand only binary zero and one why the machine can understand only the binary because you know your machine is working on your electric signal right now so your electric signal you have to convert in, in into the zero and one only by using different line coding scheme so everything whatever the computer works it works on zero and one one even if it is iot in iot you have seen uh, we train a computer so suppose if you train a computer to identify uh, the picture is for, to identify the picture the picture is 
uh, in a picture there is a cat or dog so how actually the computer can identify the computer can understand only zero and one and you are asking by showing a picture of cat identify the animal so for that time actually we have to train our computer so for the training purpose also we have to convert your image into the binary form similarly uh, you have used uh, uh, the the google concept like uh, okay google you are saying and if you are asking to remind something so whatever your audio also you have to convert into the binary again if you are uh, uh, translating your english to hindi hindi to english that time also we have to convert our text into the binary so because the computer can understand only the binary zero and one so this is a machine language the pearl is lower level language is assembly language assembly language is again the difficult that is again higher level language and here you could see c c pascal c plus plus java python so as the higher level language vary based on language to language like c and python you will find a difference and in python really you will come to know yes the python is a more higher level language compared to the c but generally we say c is a higher level language right so we'll uh, generally will see all our instruction for the assembly language because you don't have an idea of assembly language but if you are learning microprocessor subject you will come to know that in detail about the assembly language but in your book also they have given example of assembly language so today i will discuss assembly language program and you can easily understand how we can perform addition using assembly language so what are the elements of an instruction elements of an instruction so if you will divide the instruction into into a different part what are the elements you will find in the instruction so the first one is that is operation code operation code or op code operation code or op code so you have to remember for example if uh, you are the instruction is uh, c is equals to a plus b this is a instruction so the same instruction we, we you can write in assembly language like uh, uh, add a and b so add a and b so this add is what add is of code add is what of code and a and b are the variable so you are addition so add is of code it means do this what addition do this what addition so add is a operation code that is for the of code so remember this because in our further discussion in unit number 3 4 many time i use this word of code of code means what your actual instruction like addition a plus addition a and b so addition part that is of code now what is a a and b so a and b is nothing but the operand okay did you understand of code means like here i have a example of code operand so here suppose you are add add is of code al and num2 is nothing but the operand for example add here add ab so add is of code a and b is operand okay so i hope you understood here so add means do this right what addition and operand means to this do this to this addition addition on which number to this so that is operand so a and b is operand so source operand and result operand so if you are writing add if you are writing suppose if you are writing add a 
B. So this is your opcode, and these are the operand. So source operand and the result operand. So after the addition, your result will be stored here. So addition on this. So this is a source operand. And this is the result operand. This is the result operand. And this is a source operand. So after addition, your answer will be put into the A. And suppose this instruction executed. Okay, now you have to move your answer into the memory. So there would be a next instruction, for example, that is a move. That is a move. So this is the next instruction. So when you have done that, do this. So when you have done that, it means this addition, then do this. If the, there is no jump instruction, that time obviously, sequentially it will be executed. After this instruction, it will execute the another instruction, right? So in instruction mainly, there are four elements, that is operation code, add, source operand, and result operand A, B, and next instruction, whatever the instruction is there, the next instruction reference. So these are the four elements available in the instruction. So actually, as we have discussed earlier, we are talking about this A and B. So what is actually A and B? A and B, there is an address address of data the, the address of data that data might be stored into the main memory and you have to load your data from main memory to cpu register so in a computer you know there is a different types of memory is available main memory primary memory secondary memory cache uh, CPU register as well, you will get a data from the IO devices, right? You can submit your data through the keyboard, right? So what is A and B? A and B is nothing but the address. So your operand store into either store into the memory or into the register, register, but this a and B refers to that your data. Already many times I have discussed this instruction cycle state diagram. Anyone from you who can explain this diagram, kindly raise your hand so that I can unmute you. Anyone who can explain this diagram from, from you? Raise your hand so that I can unmute you. The diagram is very simple. Many times I have explained in unit number one. If you are not raising hand, I will ask you to explain. Okay, roll number one thirty five. One third roll number one thirty five. Uh, 
Yes, can you explain this diagram? Hello. Can you explain this diagram? Hello. Uh, can you explain this diagram? This state diagram? In unit number one, many times I have explained this diagram. So can you explain this? Okay. Okay, again, I uh, briefly recapitulate this diagram. Sim it is very simple, like instruction address calculation. First, you are calculating address, like PC is holding address right now. So you have to calculate the address, and according to, as per the address, we have to fetch an instruction. So you are fetching an instruction, so then we have to decode the instruction. After decoding, we came to know there is a two operand, for example. So we have to fetch a two operand. So after decoding, you come to know the instruction is like add A, B. So the two operands require A, B. A, B is what? A, B refers to address of operand. So again, we have to calculate the address. So you will come to know in our further unit how we have to, why we have to calculate the address. But here we have to A, a and B, we get the address, then we have to calculate the address and after calculating, we have to page the operand. For example, A, B, multiple operands are there. So multiple times we have to page the operand. So you page the operand, then you will perform an operation. So according, as per the instruction that I add A and B, so we will perform an addition operation and then we will store a result. So again, to store the result, we have to calculate the address. And as per address, we have to store the resultant operand. If the multiple resultant operand, multiple results are there, multiple time we have to store our result. So that's why here is a loop is available to store multiple result. The same result, it may happen, we have to provide to the next instruction or we will face the next instruction. So this is a simple state diagram. So actually how we represent the instruction. So in machine code, each instruction has a unique beat pattern. Obviously, every instruction should have a unique beat pattern so that the computer can identify. So in machine code actually, it is in the form of binary. So it may happen for add, there is one unique code for subtraction, but there is a, maybe one unique uh, binary uh, unique code is available that is uh, uh, there for to translate your assembly language into the machine language. So for, for human consumption or for the programmers, a symbolic rep representation is required because we cannot uh, remember uh, the code. For example, add the code is like 001011. For subtraction, the code might be 11010. And for the load, it might be 111011. So it would be very difficult for us to remember all these um, binary code, right? So for, we have to uh, understand and to remember this code, we have to use a symbolic representation. So addition, subtraction, load, we use this kind of symbolic representation. So operands can also be represented in this way. Like your addition, add A, B. Sub, sub is another symbolic representation for subtract. MUL for multiplication. DIV for DV to divide. Load is for loaded data from memory. And store is for to store the data to memory. So this is, uh, these are the, uh, this is your opcode. And the, the various operand will represent. So this is opcode as well as A, B. So A, B, again, as you are initializing a different variable over there for the operand, a unique code is generated for your variable. Because after all, for the machine, uh, uh, if you are converting into the machine code, definitely for each variable, different unique code required. So as we have discussed, your instruction is divided into 
uh, like we can divide into three parts like of code, operand, operand. So this is a simple instruction format. So here actually the same thing you can understand by this assembly language program, which is very simple. If you could understand this program, you can easily understand com complete unit number two. So actually here, if you see here is a data segment and code segment, like in a C language, you have to initialize header, file, then a wide main, open curly bracket. Similarly here, we have to write this data segment and code segment, which is the common. Now here, if you see num1 and num2, num1 and num2 is, uh, these are our two numbers that we are using in our program. And db, db means define byte. db means a defined byte, means a data byte. Uh, so in one byte, there's a eight bit. So eight bit uh, is reserved for your data. And here directly we are uh, initializing a number. We are give, declaring a number that is a nine, hexadecimal. Our number two is again a data type is our uh, db defined by it and a number is in hexadecimal that is seven. And the third variable that is required that is the result. So again the data type is given that is defined by it db and we have to calculate the result and in. So data segment in similarly here, like open curly bracket, close curly bracket, we have to use this end. And S is for the segment, end segment, data segment, end segment, simple. Now the second part is like a code segment. So in code segment, so here this segment, segment, end, you will find it, the color is blue. What it means, all are the keyword, all are, these are the keyword that you have to use as it is. Like in Python, there's a standard keyword now that you have to use these keywords as, as it is. You cannot change their name. So this blue color is highlighted that are the keyword. Now here, assume DS is data, CS is a code. So actually in assembly language, there is a, a different types of segment. Around the 16, uh, segments are there and equally it is divided into the four, four, four segment. So mainly the four segments are active at a time, like a code segment, data segment, extra segment, stack segment. This type of four segments are there that, that active at a time in the program. So data segment, four segment, these two segments required in our program. So we have uh, defined here data segment and four segment. Now start, start means like we were C program started here, we have started our program. Now what we are doing here, that is this thing that you have to understand. So data, so whatever your data is there, the data we are moving into the AX. AX is our, the register. The register. And this is AX data, we are moving into the data segment, that is a DS. Now here, now here actually the addition, we have to perform addition. So what we are doing here, you are num1. So this num1, that is 9H. This 9H value, we are moving into the AL. Now AL is holding a value that is a 9H. That, now what we are doing, we are adding, adding with 9H. So num2 is what? Num2 is a 7H. So here is already there is a 9H and the num2 is what? That is 7H. Actually it is holding the address of this segment, data segment. But we are, we are considering what actually this address is holding value that is 9H. And num2 is what 7h. And upcode is what add. Add means whatever this value is there, which will be added with AL. So here 
9h plus 7h that is a 10 so this result will be stored into the al now what we have to do we have to move this result into the result variable so what we will do here we will write move and your 10 result is in the al so we will move this result into the result variable now the result have the value that is a 10 and this move ah for cs it is used to terminate the program so that you have to commonly write in every program for to terminate the program here we move our value into the result and end the program so what you can understand from this program how actually in assembly language that we have to move our value and how we have to uh, move our value into the different register and then how we can perform the addition program the same thing in c language the program would be very simple and it would be the program size would be very less and the same thing if you are doing in the python you might have seen the python program directly you can write right uh, a the value and you will get the answer in python even in c your program would be bigger but in python just one line is required for the addition but in python a huge program but actually by this way only you can understand how actually the computer programming evolved and different stages so instruction type so here in our previous program you might have understand how the different uh, types of instructions are required for the execution of program to get the result like data processing data storage data movement all these instru uh, instruction we have seen in data processing means like how actually we can process a data for example if you want to uh, perform an addition operation so this you will find is uh, this there is the instruction are available for the data processing like addition subtraction multiplication division so all uh, these instruction belongs to this data processing then data storage in main memory uh, data moment so uh, we have to whatever the input you are giving, giving the data we have to store into the main memory and that whatever the data is in the main memory that we have to move into the register or into the cache memory so the movement so move that instruction we have seen and the program flow control like jump instruction required after execution executing this instruction we are, the jump is required do i so this type of program flow control statements required. so these are the four different instruction types you will see in a simple language program okay now answer did you understand whatever i have discussed up, up to this point Kindly acknowledge, did you understand? Uh, which diagram? Uh, this instruction cycle state diagram? Jitisha, which diagram you want to actually the okay? Actually, this program does not require in CEO only for the understanding purpose. I have taken this program. You no need to understand this program at this moment. You will uh, learn this assembly language program in uh, your microprocessor subject. Even you will not find this program in your book. But only actually to understand how the addition you will perform using the assembly language. So actually, we here uh, we are actually here we have initialized the data 9h and 7h. 
which is in the hexadecimal uh, form. So like you, in a C, if you compare with the C. So in C, we have to write like integer A. So here DB is our, that uh, like a data type, like defined by it, like your integer and nine. And here we have to write in hexadecimal, so nine H. And this is our, the operand name, so that is num. And all are the data segments. So instead of this data, even you can write your name, but the segment is important because segment is a keyword. So num one, num two, and result. So these three variables that require, and this segment end here. That here, this is a standard format. In every assembly language program, you will find a data segment in which you have to declare a variable. The code segment, as I told you, there is a four different types of segments are there, like a code segment, data segment, extra segment, stack segment. So how many segments you are going to use it. Actually, the 16 segments are there, but at a time, the four segments uh, active while executing a program. So out of that, how many segments you are using here? Data segment, code segment. So we have to write, assume, in a code segment. I hope you understood up to this. So if you are using a stack segment, we have to assume here stack segment. If you are assuming extra segment, we have to assume here the extra segment. Here the program starts. Now we have to move our data into the register. So uh, this AX is a register name. And we have initialized a data segment register. So data segment. So data segment register we have initialized and AX is a register. So actually uh, we are moving the register value, uh, the, the data into the AX. And Uh, then here num1 value we are moving into the AL. Now AL is holding a 9H and num2 is holding a 7H. So nine add 9H plus 7H. Now so AL holding a value that is a 10 after addition of 9H and 7H. So the, the, the result is 10 and AL register is holding this address. 10. Now we have to move this value into the result. So again, move this value, move into the result. And this to end, to terminate the program. In every program, you will find this two line over there. So it is very simple. Actually, you no need to remember. No one will, no one will ask you in this subject to explain this program. Uh, but to understand actually how we will we can perform addition and how actually we are moving our data into a register and how we have to uh, write an instruction. Like the same format you could see here, opcode, operand reference, operand reference. So here you will find this add is opcode, al is op operand reference, num2 is operand reference, simple. And in the instruction, actually processing requires, storage is required, moment is required, and program flow control, like jump is there, uh, do while is there, right? So these are the instruction types, right? Okay, any other questions? If you have, you can ask me to the chat box. Now, did you understand whatever we have discussed up to this point? Okay, so we'll see a few example and then our first uh, topic will complete here. Like the number of addresses. Now we have seen how we can perform addition operation, right? Like add a b, add a b. Uh, so actually different way we can perform this addition operation. Now, now here we will see the how the number of addresses uh, we can use to do the same thing. Like here, we'll see the first three addresses and we'll see what are their advantages and disadvantages. Now to perform this addition operation, we can use the three addresses, operand one, operand two, and result. We have seen in our previous example also, we have used the three operand. So A is equals to B plus C. And maybe the fourth operand is there to 
for the next instruction which is implicit explicitly it is not declared over there but actually implicitly there is a address for the next instruction so actually the four are there but in, uh, implicitly uh, the fourth one is implicitly it is not explicitly written over there that's why we are considering the three addresses that is a is equal to b plus c now here you will find a b c the three different uh, addresses we are using none of the addresses common all three addresses are distinct and because of this we need a very long word to hold everything so we have to consider the three different addresses to hold the first number second number and the result the same thing you we can perform by the two addresses like one address doubles as operand and the result now here the one address that is a address is holding one operand as well as the result so here a is equals to a plus b so if, suppose a is a 2 and b is a 3 so after addition your resultant a will hold 5 2 plus 3 that is 5 so in a we can after addition we can put our answer into the variable a so see here one address reduce only the two addresses are there so by this way we can reduce the length of instruction here we can reduce the length of instruction but require some extra work what kind of extra work required we have to temporarily store this result into a one register and then we have to move that value into the a so now you might have understand why we have to move in our previous example also we you have seen first we after addition we have to store this result into the one more register and then we have to store the result again into the a so this extra work overhead increases but the two addresses are required next one is one address the same thing we can do by the one address actually here implicitly again there is a second address but explicitly it is not defined here why the second address is required obviously to hold one the another operand one address required so what we can do we can use accumulator accumulator is available on the processor uh, it is one kind of register to hold the value so we can utilize this uh, accumulator and uh, then we can perform addition commonly in early machine you will find this accumulator available for specifically for this purpose like load x then add a seven store x so this x is nothing but you are, like you can consider as accumulator first you have uh moved your value into the x then add with the seven and after addition again you are storing your result into the accumulator so by using one address only we can we per, we can perform the same address addition operation and even by using zero addresses we can perform the addition operation it is not the case as i am talking again and again without address we cannot perform addition operation but explicitly we are not declaring our addresses over there implicitly we are using the whatever the registers available but explicitly we are not declaring over there so all addresses are implicit addresses are there it means we are using these addresses but explicitly we are not defining addresses in our program so how we can do this by using a stack you might have learning the stack concept in data structure i think so a stack you know uh, in a stack we have to push our first value then we have to push a second value and then we have to perform addition and when you will pop whatever the top value you will get the answer so by this way by using a stack that is first come last out and q first come first out so this is the concept you might have learned in data structure 
So by using the stack, actually in Juro addresses, we can perform the same addition operation. Now the characteristic summary, this is our first topic, what we have discussed in the characteristics. An operation code known as opcode, which specifies the operation to be performed. So operation code, you have to remember throughout the unit, anytime I will ask you, what is the opcode, what is the operand, okay? So operation code known as opcode, like operation code is add, so add is the word opcode, which specifies the operation. Actually, add is specifying the operation. Na? What operation you have to perform? Add, add means addition operation we have to perform. So that is opcode. References to operands, on which the operation is to be performed. So opcode is add, A and B is operand. So operand is giving us references at location of A and location of B, data is there. So on respective data, A address and B address, we have to perform the operation, whatever defined in the opcode. A reference to the operand, which will store the result produced by the instruction. So after the execution as per the operation, we will perform an operation and result will be stored again into the one of the operand. That operand is also again the address of your data. So that's why it is a reference and a reference to the next instruction to be executed. So the first instruction executed here, you got the result, now you will move for the next instruction. So the next instruction address. So in first topic, mainly our discussion is related to this four point. I hope all you could understand the characteristics instruction characteristics okay so if you have any question you can ask me if you understood each and everything you can leave the session today's session is over meanwhile if you want uh, i should revise whatever we have discussed today's session i can revise the complete lecture briefly if anyone want, kindly acknowledge in chat box. I will revise complete lecture. If you could understand, you can leave the session. Okay, so briefly. So, yes, sir, is for did you understand or you want? Uh, revision for the complete today's lecture. Okay. So today uh, we have discussed about what is an instruction set. Okay, I'm revising briefly, which is very simple, what we have to discuss today. What is an instruction set? Instruction set means uh, the collection of instruction. Obviously, it is a set. Set means what? The collection of instruction. But what is an instruction? Instruction means which is understood by a CPU, right? Which is understood by the CPU. But we have discussed here, the CPU can understand only zero and one, right? So your machine code is in the form of zero and one. But actually we cannot understand this kind of coding. Human cannot understand this kind of coding. That's why we represent by the code by using assembly language. So the, whatever the instruction we will discuss here, we will relate it to assembly language. So this is the hardware, the machine language is 01. Assembly language is assembly language convert into the machine language and this machine language, now your machine can understand because this machine language is nothing but the 01. Now assembly language, that is lower level language. So elements of instruction. Now, if you will divide one instruction into different parts, what will, what are the different elements that are available over there? 
so of code of code means add add is your of code and what you want to add a and b so source operand and result operand so b is your source operand and result operand is a because after addition you have to store your result into the a so this is a b source operand and result operand is a so this instruction executed now we will move for the next instruction that's why the next instruction reference so actually your data stored either into the main memory or the cache or the cpu register or you will provide your uh, operand to the input output devices so of code means add a and b is so operand this instruction page cycle already we have discussed many time we have to calculate the address we have to page instruction after patching instruction we have to decode the instruction here you will come to know the instruction is add a b so then we have to uh, page a and b so operand address calculation required and then we have to page a and b now you page a and b then we have to perform operation here we will perform an operation addition operation perform then we have to store the result to store the result again we have to calculate the address and then we will we can store the result here we store the result the same result may be used for the next instruction or we will page the next instruction so this instruction uh, we can represent uh, actually this every uh, op code have a unique code in machine language like addition subtraction load uh, division store these are the instruction for in assembly language for these instruction there is a unique code in machine language like 1100 this unique code is for addition 001111 this is assume like this unique code is for the subsection that this kind of code would be very difficult for human being to remember but this way actually we can the machine language represent the instruction we have seen this program how actually we perform addition how add al num2 it means al is holding a number 1 that is 9h and num2 is holding a 7h and after addition your result is stored into the al and then this al is there in al there is a result so we have to move this al into the result so in instruction type what we have to do we have to process our data so addition we have perform data storage so we have to store our data into the main memory for example after addition you have to store your result into the main memory data movement is required like a and b you know the addresses so we have to page the respect to data so after so for the paging data movement required sometime we will submit the data from the input output device input device so again data movement required from input device to your uh, processor and program flow control so in flow control you know uh if there if there is a jump instruction is there we have to jump from one line to the another line and do while again there is we have to jump and again we have seen the different addresses for the addition we can use a different types of addresses three addresses for the addition but uh, actually it increases uh, uh the your the instruction size the two addresses but here required extra work but minimizes the instruction size we can use a one address implicitly we can use a second address the same uh, same thing implicitly we can use all addresses and zero explicitly addresses we have to initialize and in overall in characteristics what we have discussed in today's lecture an operation code known as op code that you have to remember again and again i'm to do add is our op code references to operand on which the operation is to be performed it means the operand is a and b op code means add a and b is operand this operand is nothing but the references a and b is giving the memory address where the data is stored a reference to the operand which will store the result produced by the instruction so after addition a and b your result uh, would be stored into the a so a is the reference for the result operand 
and this instruction is executed here so the next instruction will be executed so for the next instruction again the next uh, instruction uh, the reference address is required so in these are the four things that we have discussed here the opcode operand resultant operand and next instruction so this is overall the characteristics of instruction i hope now all you understood the first topic that is characteristics and after this lecture i am going to upload assignment for unit number 1 as well as test all you have to attempt test or the assignment whatever i will upload here in the moodle okay and uh, the same thing i will post uh, on your whatsapp group you have to finish your assignment or test within a deadline thank you now you can leave the session if someone have a question you can post me through the chat box i am here to answer your question